Hi guys, it's Vlogmas Day 2. Um, sorry about the lighting, it is, well it's not that late, it's 5 to 5, but you know what it's like at the moment, it gets dark pretty late. Um, I'm in my parents' house, as you may be able to tell, I'm in my bedroom there, that's why I've got like a teddy bear and stuff <laughs> in my room, and it looks very different. Um, but yeah, I didn't think the, I didn't think the lighting was too bad, um, especially for the video that I'm going to film, so... I hope, I hope you can put up with it. I am going to film my 10 favourite books of all time. I always say books, I say books slash series. 10 all time favourite books slash series. Um, I've got hard copies of most of them, a couple I don't, so I'll just save those ones for last. Um, but I can still recommend them without showing you, so that's good. Um, and I will get started. I limited myself to one Terry Pratchett book. Um, I've done this with all authors, um, unless it's a series. I've limited myself one book to an author because otherwise it gets really difficult. Um, and it, then at the same time I'm still recommending you the author so you can go and check out more of their books. Um, not just the one that I'm recommending to you, so hopefully this will be helpful. Um, and for Terry Pratchett I picked Going Postal. Um, I do actually have a video already that I did last Vlogmas uh, about my favourite Terry Pratchett books, um, so if you want to know the other ones that I love then you can check out that video. Um, but this is my all time favourite one. It's uh, Centred around, I have talked about it before so I'll be brief, it's centred around Moise von Litvig who is an ex-con and he is um, employed by the patrician to, instead of suffering the death penalty, which he's supposed to, um, he is enlisted to save the post office and bring it back from the sort of disarray that it is in, um, it's completely fallen and it's been overtaken by the clacks which is sort of like a weird Terry Pratchett world cross between the telegraph and phones and fax and weird things like that but it's a more mechanical form of communication um, that's ruined the post office in Ankmore Park which is the uh, centre, uh, the capital of the disc world and uh, Moise von Lundbeck has been given this duty but at the same time obviously he's still a con and he has no choice in the matter, he doesn't really want to be doing it and um, so it's really comical, really funny um, and really really witty like all the Terry Pratchett's books. Next is a series, um, this is the second in the series um, and it's the Aragon series or well The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this is a the second one, which is Eldest, um, as you can see this is a bit bashed. Um, usually if I love a book it does end up a bit bashed because I'll carry it around places when I'm reading it and yeah. But um, the Aragon series, absolutely love it. If there is a hole in your life since the Harry Potter series then perhaps you might want to try Aragon. And do not go by the awful, awful rendition they um, made in the movie and um, it was so bad and the, the books are amazing they're such in-depth stories there's so many details there's so many characters if you like epic fantasy you're probably going to like this especially if you like dragons i love dragons so this was right up my alley anyone that kind of likes epic fantasy perhaps like game of thrones or lord of the rings you might want to check out aragon if you haven't already um it's just it's just magical, it's just an absolutely wonderful book. The characters are really interesting, they really do develop, especially Aragorn throughout the story, it really changes as a character, it's really interesting to follow. Um, yeah, and I would recommend it to anyone that likes fantasy fiction, um, it's one of my all time favourite books. So next, I'm going to get over and done with, is the Harry Potter series. Um, sorry if it's a cliche, but I love it. I grew up with Harry Potter, I started reading them when I was seven, and I think the last one came out when I was like 15 or something like that. They just sort of, I grew up at the same time as reading them, and it was really, it was really an amazing experience. Movies aren't terrible, but I would still read the books. Um, I have friends of watched the movies and not been that impressed, read the books and fallen in love. Um, you don't think you should ever stop, you shouldn't, you should ever be put off from a book because of the movie because unfortunately movies aren't usually as good as the real thing. So, um, Harry Potter series, woo! <laughs> Next is technically kind of a children's book but it's a classic and it is one of my all time favourite books so I couldn't not include it. 
and it is uh, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe um, and the series of course, um, the entire Chronicles of Narnia um, but the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is my favourite it is the one that I read first despite it not being the first one and I feel like it's the one most people read first because it really stands out amongst the other ones the first one technically is The Magician's Nephew which is really amazing and if you haven't read it and you've read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe you might want to read The Magician's Nephew because it explains a lot of the little things that are that are in the sort of in Narnia like why is our lamppost and um, you kind of find out these little interesting things and um, because obviously they happened in that book before and it's really interesting but um, Lion, the Witch and Wardrobe I don't care what age you are if you haven't read this go now even if you're not like a fantasy person this book is magical and it will just make you feel like a child again and C.S. Lewis is uh, his um fantasy is spectacular <laughs> he has an incredible imagination or had um, i don't have my copy of this book because it's at my flat instead of my parents house but i do have the audiobook ver well one of the audiobook versions um just to have a display item um and it's sherlock holmes i am a sherlock holmes nut sir arthur conan doyle is just like my idol I just want to be him it's just it's the ultimate of like detective uh, of the detective genre there is I think oh, was it like almost 60 short stories or something there's a lot of short stories and four novels and um, if I had to pick a favorite of the novels it would be the sign of four um which is just fantastic it's so clever the revelation at the end is just just not what you would expect at all it's an utter surprise um the whole thing fits together so well and it's so intricate and um i love dr watson he's my favorite character he's the one that narrates the stories um and his i like his storyline in the sound of four um yeah so i don't want to spoil it for you but it's a really good mystery um and it's not technically the first novel, but it is my favourite one. Um, the first one is the f the the one the story slash novel where <laughs> almost a Doctor Who, uh, Doctor Watson and Sherlock Holmes meet is um a study in Scarlet. So if you want to start somewhere, that's probably the best place to. But um, there's really no requirement. But um, it's a good one if you want to. I I started with the short stories um and then read the the novels later. Uh. So it's not a requirement, but yeah, Sherlock Holmes, massive Sherlock Holmes nerd, like, so much. <laughs> Next, I will just show you another one, which I can't find the physical copy, I just don't know where it is. But I also have the radio version, and it's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ooh. Amazing comic science fiction. If you like science fiction, you like, or you like comedy, um it's one for you. The humour is hilarious. I feel like if you get the humour of Terry Pratchett and you really enjoy that, you'll probably like the humour of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as well. Not to say they're similar, but they're, they, I feel they appeal to the same demographic um, kind of thing, like me and my dad love and my mum doesn't, um, that kind of thing. It's just so funny and, and it revolves around Arthur Dent who is a human and his friend Ford Prefect who hitchhike from the planet Earth after it has been destroyed to make way for a hyperspace by hyperspace bypass um by a Vogan con uh, destructive fleet um which is just these aliens and basically they blow up the earth so they can um make a bypass um in space and uh, Arthur Dent, who was just like an ordinary guy, didn't know anything about space, is now travelling outer space with his friend Ford Prefect and some other really interesting characters. Douglas Adams is pure genius. <laughs> the next series is probably not what I'd describe as high literature, but it's it's really good and I really enjoyed reading it when I was younger. Um, it's probably quite a good one if you're like a teenager and um, sort of it's young adult fiction um but not to say that you can't read it at any age but yeah it's one of my one of my favorite young adult series um and it's the Wicca series by Kate Tiernan I know in America this is called the sweep series instead I'm not exactly sure why but yeah so if you're in the US 
um, Canada probably as well, that kind of thing. I know it's called the Sweep series, but just look for either Wick or Sweep, or depending on where you are, I don't know. It revolves around this girl called Morgan who starts off at 16 at the beginning of the books, but obviously she ages because I think there's something like 14, but <laughs> like there's a lot of them. Um, they're quite small books, easy reading. She um, meets this boy in the first book called Cal. I don't want to give too much away because the story really does evolve and change quite a lot throughout the books because there's so many of them and a lot happens in each book. Um, but yeah, it starts off her meeting this boy Cal that introduces her to Wicca and she just finds that she has this affinity with it and it all kind of roller coasters from there and it's really interesting, it's really interesting if you like that kind of thing. I just think it's a really nice book because it's treated really well, it's not, it's not treated in a sort of stereotypical, offensive, um, way that some mediums treat um, these sort of Wiccan religions. Um, I do think it's really nice, um, it's really, really nice read. Um, it's again, if you like magic and fantasy, it's in this at the same time as it being set in sort of everyday, in the everyday world revolving around normal teenagers, so it's got that element as well. You've got that sort of real life teenage storylines that you get from young adult as well as the sort of magic, which is really nice if you like fantasy, especially if you're younger. Um, so yeah, uh, the Wicca series, this isn't actually the first one, the first one's called Book of Shadows. Next would, I was having real difficulty because like I said, I said I would only pick one book series per author and I knew I wanted to include Margaret Atwood and I had real trouble picking between two. Um, I think they draw, um, in my mind I do like them equally and that would be Alias Grace and the Penelope Ad. I've done a review, a book review on the Penelope Ad before so I'm not going to talk about it, um, I'll link it in the down bar but it's really great, it's set, it's a retelling of uh, Homer's Odyssey so um, if you like uh, classics and sort of Greek mythology then you might really really like that one. Uh, Alias Grace, um, I wish I had it, <laughs> but I actually don't have my own copy, I borrowed it from someone else. I really wish I did have my own copy actually. It's just amazing, it's a mixture of, it's pretty, it's a mystery book I would say. It revolves around this, this female character who may or may not have murdered someone, even she doesn't know it's a period novel, I can't remember the exact period that it's set in, but like a couple of hundred years ago, um, she's not of a very high status, um, and it flicks between times, between her now in prison, between back when she was like a young girl, to when she was older and in this situation that they um, accused her of the murder. And it's just sort of really mysterious because you don't know if she did it, she doesn't know if she did it, um, there's a sort of psychological um, mystery as well going on with her, um, some mysterious characters coming in and out of it, and if you just like mystery or period novels, um, or just Margaret Atwood in general, then she's really good. It's probably the only one that I've not included so far that's not science fiction or fantasy. So if science fiction or fantasy, oh well no, I did talk about Sherlock Holmes, but science fiction or fantasy really aren't your things and Alias Grace is a really good one. Um, the next two books I'm going to mention are classics, um, not as in sort of literature classics, but classics as in books from the classical period, um, well antiquity. My two favourites are probably the Argonautica, which is an epic poem, just like uh, Homer's Odyssey and Iliad, um, although a lot shorter. Um, it's from the Hellenistic period, so it's later as well. Uh, it's also called Jason and the Golden Fleece quite often, um, or in the movie rendition, <laughs> Jason and the Argonauts. Um, it's a sort of epic journey for most of the story. Um, that revolves around Jason, um, this mythical hero who um, has to go and get the Golden Fleece um, because um, King Peleus um, has sent him to do this basically in the hopes that he'll fail miserably um, because Peleus is threatened by Jason. And last but not least is Daphnis and Chloe which is a definitely a love erotic story. Um, when I say erotic, it's not particularly explicit or anything, but it is. It's a story about these two characters, Daphne and Chloe, who are shep. Well, one's a shepherd, and um, the Chloe's a sheepherd, and 
Oh no, she's the shepherd. She's a shepherdess, sorry, and, Clo and Daphnis is a goat herd. <laughs> yeah, um, and just they sort of they fall in love. They're really young. They fall in love, um, and it's about their sort of um, learning the ways of love kind of story, um, and just it, it doesn't it doesn't move very much. It stays in the same kind of place. There's a few outside forces that get in the way. Um, so it's just, and it's not a very long book at all, I think it's like 90 odd pages, um, but it's just really nice, it's quite funny, um, there are some definite funny moments in it, um, and it's just, I, I just really enjoyed reading it, I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I just really enjoyed reading it, um, and I, there's not, there's only I think five extant um, Greek novels surviving, all of which were written under the Roman Empire, and um, so they're 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 rare, um I guess um and yeah Daphne and Chloe is quite an individual one. It's quite apart from the other four. Its storyline definitely varies the most, although they all stick to a certain plot um that's typical of the genre. Um yeah, I really enjoyed Daphne and Chloe. If you like sort of if you're into reading that kind of literature and you haven't really looked into Greek prose then I would and I really really recommend Daphne and Chloe. It's really cleverly written, Long uh, Longus who wrote it, um, very clever writer. Those are my 10 favourite books slash book series. Um, I hope you got some recommendations that you want to look into from this. Um, I'm sorry I stick to kind of two or three main genres. Those are the ones I like. I can't. I can't help it. Um, <laughs> they're my favourites, and those are my favourite books. Um, so I will see you all again tomorrow for Vlogmas Day Three, I guess. Bye, guys. <laughs>